<laughs> Have you ever had trouble expressing your anger? If so, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and depression survivor. Welcome to your depression recovery channel where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. All right, well, let's start off with our normal joke. Uh, one day a squirrel walked into a psychiatrist's office. The psychiatrist said, what are you doing here, Mr. Squirrel? He said, well, have you ever heard of the uh, phrase, you are what you eat? The psychiatrist said, yes, I have. The squirrel said, well, if that's true, I think I'm nuts. So the psychiatrist gave him a little bit of a discount on his treatments. All right, so the title of today's video is called, uh, what is this video called? It's called How people, Depressed People Can Express Anger in a Healthy Way. That's good. Anyway, a lot of us have heard this phrase, depression is anger turned inwards. I, I heard that when I was in graduate school, when I was in undergraduate school. It's been around for quite a long time, but is it true? Well, depression is much more complicated than having one cause, but there is some truth in it. Uh, for example, um, during one of my episodes, when I made a really dumb decision, I gave up a successful private practice, decided to travel to Europe, and I got depressed there. I got so angry at myself that I started hitting myself in the head, literally, to express my fury at myself. Another client tells me who suffers from depression, you know, I, I set my goals for the day, but when I can't get out of bed, I get so angry, I literally emotionally beat myself up. When the comedian Woody Allen was asked uh, if he ever got angry, he said, no, I don't get angry, I just grow tumors. So uh, behind this joke is a very important truth, that when anger is not expressed in a healthy day, healthy way, <laughs> it can go into the body and cause problems. Many of us have been taught that anger is bad. In Catholic theology, anger is considered one of the seven deadly sins. But anger is not a bad thing, it's just a feeling, and it's what we do with that feeling that counts. In the book, Your Perfect Right, uh, the author talks about three different ways of responding when you feel angry. The first is to be a doormat and let people walk over you. Well, unfortunately, that's what my father did when my mother yelled at him. He would just, you know, stuff his anger until one day he blew up. And he said, God damn it, I can't take it anymore. Sounds like the uh, film network back in the 1970s. The second way to deal with your angry feelings is do just the opposite, and that's become overly aggressive and lash out. Uh, this obviously must be the motivation of internet trolls. I never heard that term until uh, a couple of them invaded my, my YouTube live chat many uh, weeks ago, and they posted all sorts of nasty, abusive, profane comments on the channel. I, 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 you know, as soon as I got rid of one, another one popped up. It was really uh, bad news. And I guess these people are really angry at something, and what they do is instead of expressing it in healthy ways, they just take it out on innocent people. The third and healthy way of dealing with anger <coughs> is to be assertive. This means instead of bottling up the anger, you stand up for yourself without becoming aggressive. The Buddhists call this the middle way, and think about that old fairy tale, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. One pot of porridge was too hot, the other was too cold, the third was just right. Being assertive is expressing your anger just right. Here's an example of being assertive. Let's say you're talking with someone, they accidentally step on your toes. You might say, excuse me, you're stepping on my toes, could you please take a step backwards? Notice you didn't punch him in the face, but neither did you remain silent and endure the pain. Now, this is easier said than done because uh, most of our parents, or many of our parents, did not model the expression of anger in a healthy way. Either they were passive like my father, or they were overly aggressive and lashed out, taking out their anger on their children or on each other. In addition, many people who suffer from depression have experienced childhood physical, sexual, or emotional abuse. Instead of getting angry at the abusers, they turn it on themselves and blame themselves, as children often do. So there's a book called The Courage to Heal, very popular many years ago, that had this quote, I never forgot, it said, anger is the backbone of healing. And what they meant is that when you get the anger out and turn it towards the guilty party, you're free to release a lot of the self-blame and shame that you've been carrying all these years. One well-known person who really modeled a uh, skillful expression of anger was Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday we just celebrated. He and other African-American leaders were justifiably angry about decades of discrimination and segregation. But 
he didn't, uh, well, first of all, he said, I'm not going to take it anymore. We're not going to take it anymore. So he wasn't passive. But neither was he aggressive. He didn't uh, promote violence, resort to violence. So instead, he took the middle way. He chose being assertive. And what he did is he emulated Mahatma Gandhi's uh, concept of nonviolent resistance. And his first test of that or expression of that came with the Montgomery bus boycott. And over one year, uh, all the African-American citizens in Montgomery, Alabama, refused to ride the bus. And eventually, they got the Supreme Court to declare that discrimination illegal. Now, this uh, garnered King international attention, uh, made him quite famous. And his tactics of using mass nonviolent resistance combined with Christian ethics became a model of challenging discrimination around the planet. Finally, if you would like to learn how you can become more assertive and express your anger in a healthy way, simply Google the term assertiveness training workshops. Now, these were first introduced in the 1980s, but they're still very popular. So if you Google that term, you will be uh, taken to a host of uh, websites where you can take many, many trainings around the country, around the world, whatever, but they're out there to be taken. This has been Douglas Block. I thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something from it. If you did so, give it a like, or you can leave a comment for me, or you can simply email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, when you see my photo on the screen, simply click on it. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. Click on that button, and if you click on the bell to the right of it, you'll be notified every time I publish a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel for as little as $2 a month, just simply click on the Patreon image and you'll be taken to that page. And you can always go to HealingFromDepression.com, the website I started many, many years ago, almost 20 years ago. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much for watching.